Hi everybody, I'm Jones and welcome to my channel. This is the place where I cook up some easy, healthy, and delicious plant-based recipes that you can try at home. Today I have four really healthy and delicious plant-based breakfasts for you to try. Now these recipes are based off of the Starch Solution and Maximum Weight Loss programs by Dr. McDougall. If you're new to a plant-based diet, you may not be familiar with Dr. McDougall, but he is a doctor who is a huge advocate of a plant-based diet, and he's written several books. Two of the most popular are The Starch Solution and his Maximum Weight Loss program. So as you can tell by the title, The Starch Solution, Dr. McDougall bases his plans off of eating starches, such as potatoes, sweet potatoes, oats, rice, all kinds of whole grains and beans, and then also pairing those with lots of non-starchy vegetables, which you can think of as your cruciferous vegetables, your leafy greens, tomatoes, all those other kinds of non-starchy vegetables. The easiest way to think about it is a 50-50 plate. So you have your plate and half of it is going to be starches, like I talked about, they can be whole grains or they can be potatoes or rice. And then the other half of your plate is going to be those non-starchy vegetables. The recipes I'm showing you today are perfect for the Maximum Weight Loss Solution program because they are oil free. Now they're not completely fat free because I'm using some hummus and hummus contains tahini and tahini is made from sesame seeds, but sesame seeds are a healthy source of fat. I also use some sliced almonds as a topping on some of my breakfasts, but I use them sparingly and again, they are a healthy source of fat. Now in the Maximum Weight Loss Program, McDougall recommends avoiding all fats during the time that you're losing weight and then once you've lost the weight you reintroduce those healthy fats but I personally and I want to be completely honest with you I personally found that I had some digestive issues when I did that I went completely fat free for about a month and I did have some issues and I learned that in order to absorb all the nutrients from your vegetables, all those delicious and healthy vegetables that you're eating, you do need to add some healthy fats and that helps your body absorb those nutrients. Otherwise, you're just filling your body up with roughage and it's good for you in some ways, but if you're not absorbing all those nutrients, it's just not as healthy and there's really no point. So if you want to know more about the Starch Solution Diet, I will leave some links in the description box below for Dr. McDougall's books and also some helpful videos. I will also leave all the written recipes or links to the written recipes on my blog, vegerarchy.com, in the description box below. And if you like my recipes, make sure that you give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also make sure that you hit the notification bell so that you get notified every time I post a new recipe. Also, I would love it if you would leave me a comment, say hi, and let me know what your biggest challenge is in starting or maintaining a plant-based diet. I would really love to know because I want to provide you with the best content to help you on your plant-based journey. So, I've done enough talking for now, let's get into the recipes. The first recipe I'm showing you today is for a Mexican sweet potato boat. And I'm starting with a sweet potato that I'm going to bake in my air fryer. I am just putting that at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes. And then when it's done baking, I slice it open and I'm just going to mash up the insides. Then I just sprinkle some seasoning on top, like salt and pepper, but you can use whatever you like. 
And now I'm adding some black beans that I had already cooked in my Instant Pot and had them in the refrigerator. But you could certainly use any kind of bean that you have on hand, including refrieds. And I sprinkled some nutritional yeast on there. And now I am putting on some sliced chard, which is from my garden. I have lots of it in my fridge and in my garden, so I'm using that up. But you could use spinach or kale or any type of green that you like. And then I added some salsa and I'm going to put that in the microwave for just a couple of minutes to wilt the chard. I like my chard to be warm and soft in this dish, but you can just do it raw if that's what you like. And then I added some avocado slices and some of this cashew yogurt. Now the cashew yogurt is sort of a replacement for sour cream and it does have some fat in it as well as the avocado. So if you are trying to do completely fat free, these things are totally optional. I also added some cherry tomatoes because I have lots of them in my garden and they make a really nice addition to this meal. Now this is a recipe that is in my free ebook, which I will leave a link for in the description box below. All right, the next recipe is for two different kinds of toast because I don't know about you, but when I have toast, I like to have one savory and one sweet. So for the savory one, we're gonna start by mincing up some garlic. And I really recommend using fresh minced garlic rather than garlic powder, but you could do that if that's what you have. So I'm sauteing the garlic in a pan with some water instead of oil, and I will let that cook a little bit while I am slicing up the cherry tomatoes. Again, these are from my garden, but if you have regular tomatoes, you could just dice them up and that will work just fine. These tomatoes are really sweet and delicious. So I'm just letting them cook down a little bit and then I added some fresh basil. And then I'm just giving that a little stir and then I'm adding some of this onion salt, which is a new product from Trader Joe's, which I'm really excited about because it is really good and I've been adding it to everything. And then I just put some fresh arugula in there also from my garden. Now we have two pieces of whole grain toast and I'm going to put some of this dill pickle hummus on it. This is also a new product at Trader Joe's that is so delicious. I highly recommend it. It really kind of took this toast to the next level. And now I'm just going to add my tomato and arugula and garlic mixture on there. And I'm telling you guys, this came out really, really good. You have to try it. So now we're going to move on to the sweet version of the toast. And I'm starting with some almond butter, but you can use peanut butter or sunflower butter or whatever kind of butter turns you on. And then I'm just going to slice up some banana to put on top of that. Then I'm just going to add a little bit of agave syrup, but you can certainly use maple syrup or even just regular cane sugar. And then I'm sprinkling some cinnamon on top. And this is just sort of like an elevated version of cinnamon toast, so good. And again, I highly recommend this savory toast. It was amazing and I will definitely be making this over and over again, as long as my sweet cherry tomatoes last in the garden. Next, I'm going to make a smoothie, which I'm sure you've seen lots of smoothies, so hopefully this one will be a little bit different. And then I'm also going to pair it with another recipe, which might be a little bit of a surprise to you, but it's sort of balance it out, make that 50-50 plate kind of idea. So the first thing I'm adding here is some frozen bananas. 
And then I'm going to add some cucumber. And of course, this one is from my garden. It was a nice big one and was perfect for adding to a smoothie. So I'm just adding a few slices. And then I'm going to add some frozen blueberries. Next, I'm going to add a special ingredient, which is frozen cauliflower. And you might think this is strange, but it's a great way to add some more veggies. It has a really neutral flavor and makes a really creamy texture. And then I'm going to add some organic raspberries because it needed a little more fruit and I really needed to use up these raspberries. The next special ingredient is some spirulina powder. Now I buy this in bulk and I keep it in a little jar to um, make it convenient to use. I'm a big fan of algae and spirulina definitely fits that category and it has all kinds of nutrients that you can't get from other types of vegetables. So I'm also adding just a little bit of water because it does need some liquid, but I didn't want to add juice or milk to add too many calories. So I'm just going to blend that up until it's smooth. Of course, you probably need to scrape down the sides a little bit at some point, but just keep blending. And this didn't come out a really great color, and I know this uh, footage is really dark. Um, it did kind of look like uh, swamp goo, <laughs> but trust me, it was really delicious. And I'm just sprinkling some toasted almonds on there and also some cacao nibs. So this smoothie was packed full of nutrients and it's also got some healthy fats in there, but I wanted to add something a little more to make it balanced, more like the 50-50 plate I was talking about, so I decided to make a potato salad. Um, and I'm just making up this recipe on the fly, so it was a little bit of an experiment, but it did turn out really delicious and it was really kind of refreshing and made a perfect pair to that delicious smoothie. So I'm just slicing up some potatoes that I had already steamed and now I'm adding some more homegrown cucumber. Looks like this is a different cucumber but it was homegrown. And I like to slice that up into smaller pieces. Next, I'm adding some sliced celery. I'm just using one stalk for this. And one large radish that I am just slicing up into small pieces. Just adds a little extra bite to this recipe. I'm also adding some scallions or green onions. These ones were just about to go bad in my fridge, so I needed to use them up, but you could certainly use red onion as well. And then I'm just squeezing some fresh lemon juice in there. I think I used the juice from a whole lemon. And to season it up, I'm using this Greek seasoning that I made. This recipe for this is also in my free ebook which again will be linked in the description box below and i just sprinkled some of that and i was also using up this cilantro that was also about to go bad in my fridge I'm trying not to waste any food so making sure i use up things before they go bad then i just mixed that up and gave it a taste and realized that it needed some vinegar. Of course, you can't have a potato salad without vinegar. I think I used rice vinegar here. And I also ended up adding some mustard to it for a little extra flavor, extra bite. I love mustard, especially in potato salad. So like I said, this was a really refreshing and interesting addition to just having a smoothie and it made for a really satisfying breakfast and you know made a more balanced breakfast i think so <laughs> give it a try if you like 
I know it's kind of weird having potato salad for breakfast, but during the summer months, it was really nice. So the next recipe is for a peachy oatmeal and also some steamed chard on the side. So to start the oatmeal, we of course need some water and I think I added about one and a quarter to one and a half cups of water here because I'm going to use about three quarters of a cup of whole rolled oats. I always add chia to my oatmeal. I'm using about a tablespoon here. And just a suggestion is to grind your chia seeds because it helps absorb the nutrients better. And then I'm adding some cinnamon and some powdered ginger. A little bit of nutmeg and also some cardamom powder. And I'm just stirring that all together. And then I added some sliced peaches or nectarines. I think this was actually nectarine. And again, it was one that was about to go bad, so I wanted to use it up. So I'm just stirring that in there and I'm gonna let that simmer and cook while I steam my chard. Again, this is from my garden, isn't it beautiful? <laughs> and I just sliced it up and now I'm putting it in this steamer basket on the stove. And it really only takes a couple of minutes to steam, so this is a really easy thing to do while your oatmeal is cooking. One thing I somehow didn't film here is that I added some maple syrup to this, just a little bit. You can either add it while it's cooking or you can add it on top, but the peaches do add some sweetness to this, so you might not need it. And then I added some strawberries on top and some plant-based milk, as well as some toasted sliced almonds. For our chard, once it was steamed, I added some fresh squeezed lemon juice and some of this garlic sea salt. You could also add some of that Greek seasoning that I used before or just salt and pepper or any kind of seasoning that you like, but this was really delicious just like it was. And again, I added some toasted almonds. So this was a really delicious, really healthy, and very filling breakfast. Um, this is one of my favorite breakfasts, and it certainly meets all the qualifications for that 50-50 plate. Just very balanced nutrition and very yummy. I highly recommend it. So that's it. Those are four healthy vegan breakfast ideas for you to try at home. If you do, make sure you leave a comment below and let me know how it went, or you can also take a picture and tag me on Instagram at Vegerarchy. Also remember to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more delicious recipes. Also remember to leave a comment and let me know what your biggest challenge is in either starting or maintaining a plant-based diet. <laughs> There's my cat. Come to say goodbye and we'll see you in the next video. Peace out. Bye. <laughs>